Chris with RC Worst here. Welcome back to another great video. Today we're going to be walking you through the differences between two and three wire motors. First up, two wire motors have two wires, plus a ground of course, but we don't count that. Three wire motors have three wires, plus a ground. Again, we don't count that. The two wire motor, as you can see, you've got the two blacks and the green. And when you're hooking these two wire motors up, generally um, there's not a wrong way to hook that up. With the three wire motor, you've got a red, a yellow, and a black. And uh, those all correspond with the control box that you're going to be hooking it to. Most of the time, those are well labeled. We're going to be putting together a video on how to wire up a control box if you're curious. Uh, so stay tuned for that as well. So let's jump right in. So getting right into things, the three types of motors that you're most likely to encounter when you're dealing with submersible well pump motors is going to be PSC or permanent split capacitor, split phase, as well as induction run capacitor start or capacitor start induction run. And that's the most standard and three wire version of these, which requires a control box. So I'm going to throw those up on the board and we'll go through the differences, benefits, and everything in between regarding those different motor types. All right, so here we are. I went ahead and wrote all of the information on the board that we're going to be discussing today about two and three wire motors. And I did spare you guys uh, watching me write because I know nobody enjoys that. So anyways, we've got a permanent split capacitors, PSC, uh, split phase, CSIR, or capacitor start induction run, and we've got CSCR, capacitor start capacitor run. And so on, on the uh, side over here, left side, we've got the two wire, and on the right side, we've got the three wire. The notable differences right out the gate is two wire are limited to up to one and a half horsepower, three wire you can go up to 15 horsepower before you're having to go with a three phase. So anyways, let's focus on two wire for just a minute, talk about some of the differences between PSC and split phase motors, and then we'll jump right into three wire. So when it comes to two wire motors, you've got the permanent split capacitor, as I mentioned, and split phase. So with a per PSC motor, your start components are always in the circuit. They never disengage, uh, which can be good for reliability, but um, maybe not so good in terms of overall operation, efficiency, and longevity. So if that kind of makes sense. The starting components on a split phase are actually switched out of the circuit on startup. So when you look at split phase, I think the only people right now, and I could be wrong on this, that are offering the split phase two wire motor design is Franklin Electric. And uh, they use a very specialized switch when uh, the starting components are switching out of circuit. And basically what that switch does is uh, if the pump is bound up with sand or anything like that, it actually ratchets the shaft in an attempt to break loose anything that may be blocking the pump, which is a huge advantage over a PSC motor. And that actually brings us right into the starting torque available on these motors. Now these are just standard figures, not uh, any specific manufacturer, because a lot of times this data is not published. So this is generic information. The starting torque available on a PSC motor is typically 100% or less of full load. And then when you're looking at a split phase motor, the starting torque available is generally 200% or less of full load. So when you take into account the dramatically higher um, starting torque available and the ability for this particular shaft to ratchet if there's a blockage, you're going to have superior starting torque available and you're going to be much less likely to encounter problems relating to sand and things of that nature. So that's a great uh, feature of these pumps and it also lends itself to the, uh, the lifespan as I mentioned. So the average lifespan that I've seen on PSC motors uh, tends to be about 8 to 12 years. So not bad, and generally speaking, PSC motors can be picked up for less money. Um, so if you're a do-it-yourselfer and, and want to save some money and, and buy a little bit less expensive motor, you know, you're still going to have quite a long time before you have to cough it up again and, and get that work done. With split phase motors, you do see a slightly improved average life expectancy somewhere in the 10 to 14 year range. 
but that has absolutely nothing on what three wire motors are capable of. So let's jump into three wire motors. All right, so here we are with the three wire motors. Again, we've got the CSIR, which is capacitor start induction run, or the CSCR, capacitor start capacitor run. Two big differences between these is on the uh, the CSIR panels, the starting components actually switch out of the circuit once the startup process is complete. Basically, once the motor gets up to roughly 70-75% of speed, the starting components and the winding is going to disengage. With a, a CSCR panel, the start components do disengage from the circuitry, but there is still a run capacitor that engages, um, or that is always engaged from startup, and the whole idea there is that helps to smooth out the load transitions as the, uh, the, the load changes around or the, the pressure varies or the flow varies and so forth. Um, so definitely very similar. You actually use the exact same motor in these situations. So this is more a control box choice. Um, and the CSCR panels are less common on the West Coast, um, but I have heard that on the East Coast they are a little bit more common. Uh, so we figured we'd talk about it even though the motors themselves are actually identical. So anyways, with the CSIR panel, your uh, starting torque available is about 350% or less of full load. So that's definitely superior to the two wire pumps or motors that we just spoke of. And then the average life, of course, 14 to 18 years generally. Uh, it's not uncommon for me to speak to people that have had pumps for 20, 25 years on a three wire system. And uh, occasionally you've got to replace those start components, but fortunately with the three wire pump, your control box is above ground. So you're easily able to access and replace those components without having to pull out the pump and, and do all that uh, expensive portion of the well ownership. All right, so back on the uh, starting torque of the CSCR uh, control box option, again, same motor. Um, they're slightly, they're advertised as slightly better starting torque and slightly better efficiency. Um, so that plays a role in your energy bill. And it seems to me in the research that I've done that the CSCR panels would be better suited for the longer running applications such as fountains and, and long-term irrigation and various things relating to that because you're going to gain a bigger advantage over that slight increase in efficiency over the long run. Um, um, and the average life expectancy is just slightly better because that run capacitor, um, it smooths out those uh, transitions in load and uh, helps to minimize the wear on the motor just that much more than the conventional. So obviously it goes without saying that the three wire uh, pump and motors combinations, the three wire motors specifically, you're gonna have to have a control box above ground. And with a two wire, you have no need for a control box. So for some individuals that may be an important factor in determining which one you need. But if you're looking to make the most of your investment, three wire is by far the way to go. So I did a little bit of looking at the pricing differences because sometimes people will say that there's a significant difference in cost of ownership of two wire to three wire. And really, uh, there's not as big of a difference as, as what you would expect. So I did some looking on rcworst.com today at a two wire pump and a three wire pump with a control box, and uh, here's what I found. All right, so I got my notebook here. So I priced out as of today, uh, let's see, May 23rd, 2018. So prices may fluctuate if you're watching this video later, um, but a horse and a half two wire motor on our website, Franklin Electric, $619. Uh, a horse and a half three wire motor, $506 and the control box $97 to take you to 603. So actually the horse and a half uh, is less expensive, uh, or sorry, the three wire is actually less expensive even with the control box and the added equipment. So you're gonna get more longevity and you're gonna pay a little bit less. Um, the only thing that you may pay more for is the installation of the control box itself because there is gonna be some added labor there. The only thing that you might pay a little bit more for on a three wire system versus a two wire system is that added cable that's going down the well to the motor. But in most cases, uh, people offer the same submersible pump cable for either situation and they just tell you, well, just don't use that extra wire and if you have a 
wire go bad, you've got a backup. Um, so oftentimes you're paying for the same exact wire either way. All right, so I think that pretty much sums up the differences between two wire and three wire motors, as well as a couple of the control box differences because those do exist. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great content every Tuesdays and Fridays. Looking forward to hearing your comments on this one. We'll catch you next time.